Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I got the how to make a basic quest. For this video, it's going to uh, show you guys. I'm going to show you guys how to make a kill an NPC quest. You know, we walk up to the NPC, you accept the quest to kill an NPC. Then once that NPC dies, you get cash and XP. For for this video, I'm just going to do cash stuff. But yeah, uh, let's. Uh, thank you guys for all the love and support you guys have been showing on, on the channel. Um, I think by the time this video uploads, or at least a couple hours after, I should be at. 2500 so thank you guys for getting me halfway to 3000 you guys been showing mad love mass support on the channel i i greatly appreciate it thank you to all of my channel members as well as my discord subscribers really appreciate all of them support y'all been showing and yeah look straight into it okay first things first we're going to go ahead and insert a avatar and this is going to be our avatar that we are going to use the npc to receive the quest so click avatar at the top and then click rig builder for me i'm going to select block avatar and then i'm going to drag it down i'm going to rotate it by clicking r or pressing the r key <clears throat> and then we can go ahead and name it you know give it a display name uh quest giver or actually no let's we can name it regularly because yeah the name is yeah so we'll call it quest giver right that'll be the name of it there but then i'll also change the display name to quest giver like that so it's spaced out right and then we can go ahead and leave it inside a workspace we're going to go ahead and insert a proximity prompt this is how we're going to trigger the quest to be activated so change the action test action text to press to receive a quest or explanation mark then we can go ahead and rename it to quest prompt right then we can insert a remote event into replicated storage we'll click the plus icon click remote event and then rename it to quest event right and then i'm going to insert any in NP enemy npc right so same thing avatar rig builder block avatar this time i'm going to name this uh enemy right enemy and then i'm going to go ahead and drop them in server storage right then i'm going to insert a uh screen gui inside of starter gui so screen gui right and then you guys can go ahead and name this uh let's go with like uh, i guess quest gui so we'll say quest gui oh let me do that so quest gui you guys can leave it enabled and everything um and then let's go ahead and insert a local script into the quest gui and you guys can go ahead and name this quest script and in parentheses put local then you're going to insert two frames into the quest ui so one frame then control d to duplicate it so you're going to you're going to want to name one frame quest frame and then you're going to want to name the other one current quest frame right so for quest so for quest frame i'm going to have this in the middle this is going to be what pops up on a player uh when a player tries to interact with the npc so let's do some customization you guys can customize whatever way, whatever way you want you don't have to customize it like how i'm doing it so i'm gonna do it like that maybe get like a border like like a thicker border or something like that and then i'm gonna insert a text label and then i'll have to the top and then of course this is going to be where the text goes so quest header name it quest header um I'll change the colors for like I guess like a maybe like a mm, yeah like a light gray type of color. Then bold it, scale scale the text. I'm gonna change the te the text color to white, but I'm gonna make the stroke black so it's not like blinding. And then we can delete the uh, preset text because we're gonna set the text via the script. And then yeah, um, and then we're just gonna need two buttons. So insert a text button and then insert another text button. So we can insert two text buttons, right? And then we can just you know line them up together and then you want to name one text button accept button and then of course the other one will be decline button this is how we're going to accept or decline the the uh the quest so change the text rich text scale the text um you guys can choose whatever font and stuff you want that's completely up to you guys then of course we're going to change the colors to match you know whatever the dialogue or not the dialogue just generally like the action so if we're going to accept we want it to be green you know and then we're just going to do the same thing decline rich text scale the text and then bold it and then i am also going to set the background color to a nice you know nice bright red and then once we're done with that we can go ahead and press ok and then from there we have our um we have our accept and decline button 
now we just need to go ahead and get right with the scripting so we can go ahead and set the visibility of the frame itself to not visible so so we'll uncheck it make sure it's not visible then then for the wait oh i just oh sorry guys <laughs> i did this wrong okay so current quest frame is supposed to be at the top and like in the top left quest frame is supposed to be so it's simple though all, all i gotta do is just re is just change the names so current quest and then just remove current and change the quest but yeah that's my fault quest frame should be in the middle while current quest should be in the top left so for this i'm gonna just scale this a little bit just like it's kind of you know like up here in the top left i'm gonna make it so the background is completely transparent um then i'm gonna insert a text label into the frame and then i'm going to uh let's see I'm going to name this current quest text label, right? Then I'm going to do the, then I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, background transparency is equal to one scale the text. This time I'm going to change the text color to yellow. I want it to be nice and bright, um, bold the text. And like I said, you can just set the text to nothing. We're going to set the text via the uh, local scripts and server scripts, of course, but yeah, so that's it. So far we're done with the UI. Now we can get into the actual scripting. So let's go ahead and open up the local script delete print hello world first things first We're gonna make two variables first. We're going to get the quote the quest remote event So let's do local quest event is equal to gain the replicate a storage wait for child quest event Then I'm going to get the quest NPC. So local quest NPC is equal to workspace wait for child Quest giver right or actually it's named the quest NPC. Yeah, that's what I meant to name it so we can just go ahead and rename this to quest npc and then just update it there quest npc now we're going to get into the function we're only going to have one function we're honestly not going to be on the client side for for much longer the service the service has where we handle most of everything so i'm going to do quest event on client event connect function in parentheses i'm going to put event type comma arg1 comma arg2 which stands for argument i mean short for argument then i'm just i'm going to do if event type is equal to ui UI disable enter because pretty much we're going to enable and disable the UI uh, via oh okay, sorry not the UI we're going to uh, disable and enable the prompt right because you guys know you can disable proximity prompts we're going to enable and disable that via the client side because we would only want it to be disabled for that specific player if that's the, the situation calls for it not for every player so yeah so pretty much I'm going to do quest npc dot quest prompt dot enabled is equal to false then we're just going to do the vice versa so else if event type is equal to ui enable enter then just do the complete opposite so quest npc dot quest prompt dot enabled is equal to true and just like that we are done on the on the local script we're done on the local script we can go ahead and insert a server script into server script service right and then we can go ahead and name this quest script and in parentheses put server right enter then we're going to delete print hello world we're going to make a couple variables first we're going to get the quest npc so local quest npc is equal to workspace wait for child quest npc then i'm going to make the quest remote event so local quest event is equal to game that replicated storage wait for child quest event then i'm going to do that quest event i mean it doesn't really matter if you do you know either one but it doesn't really matter anyway then i'm going to get the end the enemy from server storage so local enemy is equal to game that server storage wait for child enemy right then we're going to make two functions first we're going to create leader stats just so i can show you guys because i would honestly just make it so just a quest system but i know usually people who come to watch these videos don't usually know what they're doing so i doubt people know how to make leader stats so i'm just going to go ahead and make that real quick so I'm just do game dot players dot player added connect function in parentheses put blr which is for the player enter we're gonna create some leader stats real quick so local leader stat is equal to instance dot new in parentheses and put a folder I'm gonna parent it to the player then we'll say leader stats dot name is equal to leader stats right then I'm gonna create a cache value so local cache is equal to instance dot new of course this will be a numbered value and we're going to parent this to leader stats as we want it to be visible then I'm going to say cache dot value starting value is equal to zero and cache dot name is equal to cache I don't know why I put it in that order I usually do name then value but anyway so we're done with that function and then on to the main function which is dark comprised of our last bit of scripting 
Well, there's technically three functions inside of the one function, but yeah. I'm gonna do quest npc dot quest prompt dot triggered connect function in parentheses put PLR register for the player who triggered the prompt. First thing first, I'm going to do is I'm gonna say the text. I'm gonna say player dot player GUI dot quest UI dot quest frame dot quest header dot text is equal to quotation mark. You guys can set the text to whatever you want. For me, I'm gonna say there this is the dialogue portion, so I'm gonna say there is a man hiding in the woods that needs to be eliminated. Eliminated. Will you oh did not mean to do that? Will you take care of it? Question mark. That's gonna be the dialogue that pops up. Then I'm going to set the quest. Then I'm going to set the quest frame. I'm gonna make the quest frame visible. So I'm gonna say player dot player gui dot quest gui dot quest frame dot visible is equal to true. And then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna fire the remote event. I'm gonna say quest event fire client. Make sure you do fire client, not fire all clients, just fire client. Then we're going to fire you know the specific player. And then I'm gonna say UI disable because we don't want the player to be able to see the prompt if they already are you know interacting with the UI. Then I'm gonna say player dot player GUI dot quest UI dot quest frame dot accept button connect. Oh sorry, accept button dot mouse button one click connect function close parentheses enter. Then I'm gonna say player dot player GUI dot quest UI dot quest frame dot visible is equal to false, right? Then I'm gonna fire the remote event again. So quest event fire client player. We're just gonna do the complete opposite. So quotation marks. We're gonna say UI. This time we're going to say UI enable because you know since the player accepted the quest they can you know come back and do the same thing again right then from there I'm gonna clone the enemy so I'm gonna say local enemy clone is equal to enemy clone and then I'm gonna say enemy clone I'm gonna say enemy clone pivot because remember it is a model so pivot to and then from here I'm gonna say let's see I'm gonna go with uh Quest, I'm gonna say quest npc dot humanoid root part dot c frame I'm c frame dot new negative one oops sorry negative one comma negative one negative twenty so that it's you know it's behind the the npc right and of course lastly I'm going to parent it so enemy clone dot parent is equal to workspace then from there I'm going to set the text I'm gonna say I'm going to actually enable the current quest and then I'm going to set the text. So wait, actually, did I leave it enabled? I believe I did. I did. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Just to clear this up. So you want current quest frame. You want this to be to be visible, right? By default, set this to visible. We want this to be visible. Now, quest frame you don't want to be set visible. Just to clear that up. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say player dot player gui dot quest gui dot make sure you do current quest frame. Uh, text is equal to quotation marks. Then once again, put your own dialogue and say, "Find the enemy. Enemy located in the forest. Go first and eliminate them. And eliminate them. Right. And then once I've set the text, I'm going to set up a function for if the enemy dies. So enemy clone dot humanoid dot died. Connect function. Close parentheses. Enter. First things first. We're going to destroy the enemy. Right. Once we destroyed the enemy, we are then going to set the player's text when I update the text. And then I just realized I, I just realized I did that wrong. Current quest text label dot text, right? And then we can actually copy and paste this. So control C, control V, and then we're going to set the text this time to quest completed. Then you know still two exclamation marks. All right. And we'll say task that wait two seconds so that the player can see that they completed the, the quest. And once they've done, I'm gonna control V. And then I'm gonna say text is equal to uh, quotation mark, like you know, did blank quotation marks so that there won't be any text, right? Then I'm going to give the player some cash. So player dot leader stats dot cash dot value is greater than is greater than equal to ten. But it's completely up to you guys how how much you want to award the player. For me, I'm just gonna go with ten. Then I'm gonna say quest event fire client player, and then quest. Wait, actually, wait. Oh, sorry. Wait, actually, oh, never mind. Sorry, guys. <laughs> never mind. Forget it. Forget it. This is something I was thinking about doing, but then I changed my mind in the end. But anyway, so yeah. So don't worry about that. So once we finish the quest, we're good there. Then let's go on the outside of these parentheses. So skip the two ends, right? Then now for the last function. 
This is for the function if you just click the decline button. So player dot player gui dot quest gui dot quest frame dot decline. Oh, sorry, dot quest frame. Wait, that's yeah. Didn't it be there? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to name it. Oh, my fault, guys. So make sure you do decline button. I was like, I know I'm not tripping. So decline button dot mouse button one click connect function close parentheses enter, and then simply we're just gonna say player dot player gui dot quest ui dot quest frame dot visible is equal to false then right after i'm going to say quest event fire client the fire player and then i'm going to say quotation marks ui enable and yeah it's that simple we finished the quest system okay so we can go ahead and test this as always if you guys want access to my scripts and models you guys can become a channel member or discord subscriber links to both of those can be found in the description you get access to any of my scripts and models and stuff and links to uh, my discord server we can get help Submit video ideas and just generally chill and talk to people. I can find the description as well as my Roblox group. But anyway, so we're going to receive the quest. So let me press it. There is a man hiding in the woods that needs to be eliminated. Will you take care of it? I'm going to accept the quest. Boom. Find the enemy located in the forest and eliminate them. There's the enemy. There's obviously no forest, but I just added that for, you know, this dramatic effect. But anyway, so the enemies here, obviously, I don't have any combat systems and stuff like that. Now, if this was a real game, you you know, a real game, you would walk up, you would just, you know, start punching them and then kill them eventually. Uh, for the sake of the demonstration, I'm just going to kill the NPC by just setting the uh, NPC's health to zero so that they'll die and stuff. This would, it's, it'll be the same exact effect. So you don't have to worry. It'll be the same. It's literally the same exact thing's going to happen, regardless of whether you kill the, kill the NPC via combat system or you just set their health equal to zero. So boom. As you guys can see, the enemy, enemy was killed, and they were destroyed, and you should see in the top left for like a solid second. Probably best to increase this wait time to probably like 4 to 5 seconds, but yeah. You guys saw quest completed, and you see my cash is now equal to 10. So that's how you make a basic uh, kill an NPC quest. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys want um more more videos with the quest series, you know, show you guys how to make different quests, for sure. Just go ahead and comment suggestions in the comment section stuff and i'll i'll get to them it won't be for a while but i'll definitely will get to them and make my quest videos because quest videos honestly they're very simple and know a lot of people want to know how to make them and stuff so yeah if you guys enjoy leave a like and subscribe thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next video